Okay. Uh, so we should be ready to go then. So, uh, I believe where we last left off, we had uh, rested at the dormitory. Um, and, uh... Oh, shit. Gilly had had a rather interesting night um, in the past session. And uh, he was rushing off to discuss that night with uh, the headmaster, uh, Charlemagne Shackelford. And I believe, Gilly, you rushed off ahead of everybody else, yeah? Yeah, I did. All right. Um, and then everybody else is heading to transmutations class with uh, Professor Theophilius Nightingale. Um, so without further ado, let's get going. Um, so Gilly is off ahead of everybody else, and I'm assuming heading to straight to the office. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Come on, yo. We can't be late. Yeah, let's go. I'm Grumman. Wait, am I? There we go. Moving out of turtle's pace, I see. He's Run a turtle. A walk. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's just RP. <laughs> <laughs> we doing the awkward shuffle back and forth, Billy? Really? He's a uh, RP walking. Um, okay. Uh, so arriving back in the uh, entrance hall of the school. Uh, Crook will salute the new guard here. Um, he gives you kind of a confused look um, and just kind of grunts. He goes, mm. uh, Greetings. My name is Crook, and who might you be? Name's Throdal. You new students? Mm. Yes, we are first years. Are you a new guard? No, I've been around here quite a bit. I just work. I'll work in the second half of the week. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Throw It All. Don't go causing any trouble, because I'm the one that's going to clean it up. Crook nods. Good. We're not the ones you have to look out for. <laughs> then I suppose right. we won't have any problems. Crook will salute uh, Dustin. Uh, Dustin gives you kind of a half little salute with uh, two fingers. Uh, must be nice to take a break from Arlette every now and then, huh? Uh, after a while, you start to miss her. <laughs> Kirk will uh, salute them both. And, and... Um, so the, the classroom on your uh, uh, itinerary is um, where most of the other classrooms are. It's upstairs. On the second floor. Beach that time. You and your monk acrobatics. <laughs> I'm in my car. I can actually talk now, by the way. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I, I'm just gonna car. I'm just gonna bomb out from work in my in my park in the parking lot until someone calls me and says something important happens. So, do you think that's gonna happen? No, actually. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you, Ken Rope. Um, okay, so uh, thank you, Ken. As you uh, approach uh, upstairs, heading up the stairs to the second floor, um, towards your classroom, you see. Uh, Ten Winden talking with a student who you haven't met yet in the middle of the hallway. And they uh, they turn to look at you as you approach. Surround him so we can introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have such an aggressive uh, introduction tactic. Um, he kind of, he spins around as he's suddenly surrounded and he goes, he looks towards Ten Winden and he says, Oh, these are the first years. Yo, I'm hi. I mean, hi, I'm you. <laughs> Oh no, is that going to become a thing? <laughs> um, he, uh, 
does me or does everyone know that we're first years? I just noticed that it's a little uh, off. Feels like everyone knows who we are. I mean, you look like a first year there, Kenro. <laughs> he, he says, uh, well, you know, fresh faces and all. Um, he says, my name's... <clears throat> My name's Sola. Nice to meet you, I guess. Hello, I'm Killian. Uh, Croak will just kind of nod at him. That's Croak. <laughs> hmm. uh, he reaches out to shake each of your hands. Um, and assuming that you accept... Killian oh, very okay. vigorously shakes his hand. Okay, his hands are really warm, actually. Um, like, abnormally warm. Uh, Croak, you can't really tell through your gauntlets. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, but he vigorously shakes all your hands back. Um, and Tenwind in from behind him says, Solo, we, we really should be getting to class. Um, and he, he, uh, he looks back towards her and goes, Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. And then he looks towards the rest of you. And says, well, you know, some of the second years are heading off on their uh, term abroad this afternoon. So uh, why don't you come down to the beach at lunch and we'll show you something cool. Sound good? Oh, no, that don't sound, we'll be uh, there. Slight, slightly threatened at all, I whisper to, uh, to Killian. <laughs> uh, sand. <laughs> We'll catch some fish. Um, and then the two of them, uh, content with your answer, will uh, begin to head to class. Dang, that guy was pretty hot. Did you feel his hand? <laughs> what? I thought you were going somewhere else with that. But yes, uh, I did. Oh, I I got roll 20 to work, kind of. It's shitting my phone, but it is working. I'll take care of the movement for Kenro. Don't worry about it. I just want to see the picture. <laughs> okay, um, so your class is over here. Uh, with Theophilius Nightingale. Um, oh, slime dude. Oh my god, I can move him on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he turns around to uh, acknowledge your approach. Kirk will salute him on the way in. Oh, we got we got ourselves a Dumbledore looking fellow here. I comment just among the uh, toward the instructor, not not so he can hear, just toward the group. <laughs> I, I don't understand that reference, Ken Ro. <laughs> I is a country saying. <laughs> Um, he, he allows Killian, you all. Go ahead, go ahead. Killian gasps. Amelia didn't sit next to her. They've been sharing classes all week, and she didn't sit next to her. Killian sheds well, a tear. Of course not. We're, we're in a band. We gotta sit next to each other. Killian pushes Kenra out of his chair. <laughs> Ma'am, that was extremely rude. Mm-hmm. No, in some, culture, in some cultures, pushing a man out of their chair is akin to pointing a sword at their throat. In fact, it's been known throughout many cultures to be a great act of uh, disrespect. You know what makes a guy really manly? If he shaves his beard. <laughs> oh, ma'am, I will not shave my beard. You are incorrect. We had this conversation before. <laughs> Um, from the front of the class, Theophilius Nightingale says, all, all right, all right, students, settle down now. It's time to begin. Now, I believe I've met some of you before, is that correct? Or if not. Have I met him before? Yeah, you gave us that, uh, delicious slime. We had lunch with him on the beach. On the beach. Okay, I was not here for that one. <laughs> correct, yeah, you did meet him before. Um, and, uh, he, he nods at your, uh, acknowledgement that he's met before, um, but he does see some new faces here. 
Um, and he says, well, my name is Theophilius Nightingale for the uninitiated, and I am the head of transmutations here at the college. Now tell me, do any of you know any transmutation spells already? Kirk will shake his head no. <laughs> Easy answer. I am, I am, uh, I, I am very real, well read on transmutations. Transmutation, the name. Killian says yes. Correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got what? Thaumaturgy <laughs> and uh, Druidcraft. You got a couple things. Um, I almost put out a fire in the basement. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> Actually, yeah, nature Killian probably would have been a little better, I thought, um, <laughs> than uh, the old Killian. But um, he he acknowledges that you uh, say that you have some experience there. Um, and he says, well, the best way to teach about transmutations is to start at the beginning. A very long time ago, and he launches into like a very, very long winded lecture. Um about the origins of transmutation magic, um, starting at the most simple of cantrips. Um, and over the course of about an hour, he spends this entire class um, just covering every little nitty gritty detail down to um, what the, uh, the first man who tried a transmutation spell, what he liked to eat for breakfast. Um, he uh, covers everything that you could possibly want to know and would never even want to know at all. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the course of this lecture is quite long-winded and um, honestly very boring. So <laughs> I'm going to have <laughs> each of you make uh, an intelligence saving throw. Oh, no. To stay awake. Natural 20. <laughs> 20 plus <laughs> 1. You got 20 minus 1. You got 21. So Crook and Yo are staying awake. Crook has written down every single word he said. Right. <laughs> he, he's actually running out of paper at this point. How'd you fare, Killian? Twelve. Okay. Uh, can can she be like? Oh, sorry. Do you want me to roll for you, Kenro? Yeah, I uh, I thought I could type in uh, a roll command in roll twenty, and I might have just crashed roll twenty on my phone. That's not. <laughs> I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> Too much for a handle. Kenro, you rolled an eight. Hell yeah! Uh, Ken wrote falls asleep. Um, so as the as the lecture continues, Killian, you notice um, some light snoring uh, from beside you. Uh, very 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 quiet, but just loud enough for you to hear, Killian. Um, Kill Killian's gonna like be ripping up little balls of paper and putting them in his beard. <laughs> um, as Professor Nightingale begins to uh, as he continues his lecture. Um, he turns around to address the class um, and kind of makes some gestures with his hands. He's, he's, very, he's a hand talker. Um, and uh, he notices that um, Ken Rode has started to doze off. So he, he leans down to his desk and begins to gather something. You see him pick up a, um, just a small piece of something. Uh, the front row can see it, but none of you are in the front row. Um, and um, he will uh, begin to uh, kind of crush what he's holding in his hand. Um, and then uh, you see him start to mutter something under his breath. So, uh, Kenro, uh, yes, Kenro, you're making a wisdom saving throw. I'll do it for you. Uh, luckily, that's your strong suit, and yet yeah, you still failed it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you rolled a twelve, which is not quite sufficient. Um, so Killian yeah, from okay, okay, okay. So Killian from beside you, um, after you see Theophilia start to chant something, um, Ken wrote beside you. Uh, there's like a small sort of puff of smoke, and he transforms uh, very quickly into. A chicken. Aww. Well, a rooster probably mm -hmm. to be more accurate, but. Is this his natural form? 
Does the rooster have a beard? This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's got kind of like a bunch of feathers under its beak. <laughs> am, am, am I like snoring like... Uh, you you start you sort of startle yourself awake as you get suddenly transformed into a uh, a chicken and Killian. You hear a small a sw- yeah <laughs> exactly, mm-hmm. um, and Theophilus uh, strokes his beard and says, "Now that should teach the rest of you to stay awake in Theophilus Nightingale's classes." Yes. That nods vigorously. Can Killian cast animal friendship? Um. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, you can, yeah, you, I think, yeah, he's an animal now, so yep, go ahead. <laughs> it is using a spell slot, but go ahead. Alright, I'm gonna use it. Oh, it uses two spell slots. I oh, mean, wait, no, it's fun. He, he is, like, not not hostile to you, but... Kayleen just wants to convince him that they're best friends. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, so... Can we just eat it? Mm. Hold on, oh, wait, that's the word here. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I have the brain of, of, a, of a person still, or am I, am I like chicken brain? Um, so you have the personality of Kenrote, but you are unable to communicate and um, are not nearly as intelligent as you were. <laughs> oh, I guess. Killian could have cast speak with animals instead. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, I'm strutting my stuff. Uh, can I make a performance check as a chicken? Um, before that, we need to resolve Killian's spell. Uh, um, can I change my mind and do speak with animals instead? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We haven't done any rolls, so go ahead. All right, Killian. I shall cast speak with animals. Um, ritual cast or just normal? What would Rit- ritual casting do to it? It just means that it wouldn't use a spell slot, but it would take longer. It'd take 10 minutes to do. We're just sitting in class. Okay. So how do I ritual spell? Um, you, it would just be the same kind of concept. Um, so just not using up a spell slot. So over the course of the next like 10 minutes of his class, you just kind of quietly would concentrate on the spell. Spends the rest of class trying to understand Kenro <laughs> casting her spell. Ken Kenro is uh is like uh clucking like little like little to himself. He's just enjoying. He he is a musical instrument now. Um. Okay, uh, so after you kind of spend some time concentrating, Killian, um, eventually those clucks start to turn into um, just kind of a normal, like, hum. And you begin to understand uh, Chicken Kenro. Kenro, you can sing better than that. He's actually just saying fuck now. Pushes like, him out of his chair. It, that's, what it, that's what it translates. He's having the time of his life. Chicken. He, uh, I guess, do I recognize that, that, that she can understand me? Uh, yeah, because you can understand her. Okay. Uh, how do you think, uh, the professor would react if I, if I just kind of, uh, sauntered on over to his desk and took a little chicken poo on his desk? You should do that. I'm gonna do it. Do it. And uh, Ken Rote hops off his little bar stool chair, or whatever, and starts strutting over to the professor's desk. Um, and, he, uh, he's gonna look at you and say, "Back to your desk, student." I'm gonna I'm gonna make eye contact with him, and I'm I'm gonna go. Baka! Yes. Now back to your desk. The lecture needs to continue. I'm debating, I'm debating, guys. How how crazy is this particular Ken wrote? Can you roll con- can you roll Constitution to see if I successfully uh, do a little chicken poo on the floor? I suppose. While, while making eye contact with him. 
that was a um that was a six. Okay, I'm gonna guess is that just a fail, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were the one setting that up for yourself, so I would imagine yes, that's pretty low. Okay. I just look like a constipated chicken then. <laughs> Well, back to your I desk. Walk back, I, walk, I, I walk back to my desk with just the shame. Very good. Now the lecture can continue. Um, Did you put a chicken token on me? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and so the rest of the lecture is, again, quite long-winded, but uh, the threat of being transformed into a chicken um, manages to keep you guys paying attention for... The last little bit of his lecture. Um, and uh, he begins to wrap up and says, uh, well, I suppose that's quite enough for today. Uh, we'll begin again in the same topic next week. So make sure that you're all on time and um, try to stay awake this next time. Class is dismissed. Kenrod isn't even going to wait for him to turn him back. He's just going to jump off his little uh, chicken, his little chair, and start walking out the door as a chicken. Um, so Killian, over the course of the rest of the class, it's been a, a bit over 10 minutes. Um, so Kenrod's clucks begin to fade back into chicken noises. I was just telling her uh, true historical facts about the, the significance in the world. Is he going to remain a chicken? Uh, yes. Uh, he remains a chicken. You just can't understand him unless you want to cast that again. I don't um, want to cast it again, but can she tell everyone that she still understands him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can bluff all you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Theophilus will uh, see you. Uh, he will say, um, as he walks out of the class, don't worry. Uh, Polymorph wears off in about an hour. Uh, Kirk will gather his massive pile of notes and stuff them in his armor as he makes his way out. And we'll pick up Kenro and carry him with her. <laughs> uh, Kenro is going to resist that. He is a strong, proud, independent chicken and don't need no person to carry him. Okay, um, then you're contesting it. Uh, let's just do... Strength versus uh, dexterity, then. A dwarf uh, and a halfling fight each other. Uh, no, no, no. A halfling and a chicken. You have a different yeah. stat <laughs> table, my friend. <laughs> Wait, am I, am I rolling dexterity? Um, you're, okay, rolling, I get, I get, I get, you're rolling oh. strength to grab onto him. He's rolling dex to run away. Five. Okay, he's probably going to get away, then. Uh, yeah, he rolled a seven, so he, he, he sneaks away from you. <laughs> Kenro. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, and then just out of spite, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like perch up on Yo's shoulder. <laughs> Yo, we should find Let's Esther. Go. She'll uh, like this oh. chicken. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. We should, we should find her later. If, if, wait, how long does the next class last? Um, it's currently lunch hour, so you have a, around just under an hour. Um, with the time of walking to where you want to eat lunch plus walking back to class. So around 50 minutes. Uh, you guys want to find us and get rid of this chicken? Kirk was just kind of sitting in class already, so he awkwardly gets up and salutes Maha on his way out. <laughs> Come on, um, you overachiever. <laughs> she, she, was, uh, she was working on something on her, at her desk, and she just kind of didn't even notice you come in. But uh, as you walk out, and she hears the clanking of armor, and she goes, oh, uh, oh, good, goodbye. Uh, see ya later after lunch. Sorry about him. <laughs> um, so heading back towards the Great Hall, yes? Yep. Yep. Sounds good. When were we supposed to go to the beach? Go uh, see something cool? He told you lunchtime. No? Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Go to the beach, guys. Uh, do we have cool. to? So... Yeah, are you guys heading to the beach? Yeah, we're headed to the beach. Only if you don't want to see something cool. Okay, uh, then we're going to handle our interaction with Gilly before we do that. Okay. Uh, because but depending on how long um, 
he talks to Shackelford, he might be done by lunch. So. Wait, has Gilly not been with us this entire time? No, Gilly went to. S- Gilly disappeared. Um, oh, at I the thought Gilly skipped class. Quiet. He skipped class. Yes. Gotcha. Um, hang on. So, uh, Gilly is heading to the upper hall then. So we're back in time now. Um, oh, hang on. Let's get rid of Killian. So Gilly, back in time. This is happening during um, during transmutation class. Okay. Uh, so, oh my god, my... What was that? I have to get my cat real quick and I'll be back. <laughs> okay. <Damn cat. laughs> um... uh, she... Carolyn's really good of, as soon as it's like her turn to RP, her cat decides, nah, I'm gonna go throw up on the carpet or something. Like, <laughs> This, this is this is not a coincidence. Her cat does it on purpose. <laughs> Transcends all games too, not just. Being okay, I'm back. Sorry, his Pika <laughs> got worse. He started eating paper. Aww. So. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Uh, so Gilly, you uh, approach the headmaster's office then. So I like knock on the door kind of weakly. Um, you hear his voice from beyond the door say yes come in and he kind of um walks very slowly into the room and then peers over the side and kind of waves <laughs> like around <laughs> around the corner yeah okay um you, you see him sitting at his desk and he just kind of shoots you a about as confused a look as a skeleton can give um and then kind of shoots the same little wave back at you and says <laughs> You can come in, you know. Okay. Okay. Um, and then he like slowly walks up the stairs, and he looks and kind of tries to make eye contact, but finds it kind of awkward because there's no eyes to look at. Are they glowing though? Yeah, they have kind of like oh, almost okay. glowing orbs within them. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, go ahead. And he's like, uh... Yes, he, yes, young Gilder? Did you want to speak to me about something? He um, kind of like unsheaths his hand from the uh, cloak he's wearing mm-hmm. to show the professor. And he's like, I don't know what's going on. And then I had a bad dream. Um, he He strokes kind of one skeletal hand along his chin. Um, kind of making a scratching noise, and then he um, he he kind of he fur- he furrows his brow in a way in the only way that a skeleton can, which is not at all, um, and uh, says this this is a tad concerning. Um, when exactly did did the hand manifest? Um, that was actually yesterday. Mm-hmm. And that was sometime after your little episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I woke up um, in the apothecary and then I felt okay enough to go to my room that night. But when, but I finally looked at my hand and I was like, oh shit, changed. Mm. And his, uh, he looks kind of like confused. His facial expression. Hmm. Well, I won't mince words with you, Gilly. I, I imagine you are also quite concerned about this, and to be honest, it is fairly concerning. I've never seen any curses manifest quite like this, though. I won't say that it's out of the realm of possibility for curses. And you said that you had a bad dream. Tell me more about, more about that. So I was trying to sleep, you know, because I was feeling like shit. Mm-hmm. And it felt like um, these two entities had come and they were like telling me, we'll give you a gift. And I was like, what, what gift? And they were like, you can die. And I was like, what? I'm still young. I still have a life to live. 
Why am I gonna die here? Hold hold on. T- two two entities. What did they? Did you see them? Um. So I don't really remember. I I remember their voices. One was like a dark husky like man, and then it sounded like his wife maybe. And they were like talking together sometimes, but then not talking together. Hmm. It was well, like a bad dream. Well, that is also rather concerning. And you didn't get a good look at them? Um. I don't remember. You know how dreams kind of fade. I understand. But to, to me, it sounds like you were visited by, well, the bride and groom themselves. What? Well, you said two figures, correct? They spoke yeah. as They spoke as one, except when they diverged. Uh-huh. Yes. A man, a man and a woman? Mm-hmm. Well, that seems to fit the bill. Uh, as a lich myself, I have had my experience with them, as you can imagine. Uh, and to me, it sounds as though that was who you were visited by last night. Well, I'll be damned. Are you serious? I thought they aren't supposed to come until you're supposed to die. Or something. Well, Gilly, that's why it's so concerning. And he... He he looks confused. (laughs) You see, they do only visit you when you're about to die. What? You said that they offered you... A deal. Yeah. And the nature of that deal was that you would accept death. In exchange for what? I don't know. They didn't tell me. So how am I going to make a choice when I don't even know what they're saving me from? They didn't tell you? Supposedly. No, they didn't. Or Hmm. I don't remember. Hmm. Out of character, I think they did. Um, (laughs) They they told you loosely that they were saving you from something quite bad in the future, Um, but they didn't specify too specifically. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, that's what I think he meant. Okay. Um, Well, looking at your hand, that. That doesn't appear to be their work, so I don't imagine that this curse has anything to do with them, but the, the curse must be more severe than we even thought if if they're visiting you. Hmm. I have to do much thinking on this. I, I want you to keep me updated on anything that happens with your hand or any other sort of uh, sensations that you experience, all right? Okay, I think I can do that. Now, there is one more thing. Your friends, the group that you're always around. Mm hmm. You trust them, yes? I mean, I barely know them. It's been like three days. So. Not really. <laughs> well, do do you think that that they would come to your aid? I don't know. He's he looks confused and concerned about why friends are being brought up. The reason I bring them up is that, well, that little episode that you had in the um, in the restricted section of the library where you uh, seemed to lose control of your body. If you could have your friends watch out for you and maybe stop you if you lose control again from taking any rash actions or movements that you don't want to do, 
Do you think you could trust them to do that? I mean, I can ask. Have you discussed any of this with them? No, not really. Well, if you find them to be trustworthy, then perhaps it might be worthwhile to have four extra people looking out for you. This is quite a serious situation, Gilda. And he looks a little shocked, and he's like, okay, and he nods his head. Hmm. Is there anything else? Um, that was it. I just couldn't sleep very well, so I'm not feeling too good. I understand, but if any of this stuff begins to repeat itself, I, I want you to come see me just like you did. Okay? Okay. Do I get an excuse for class? Mm, I, I think in this case we can make a pass for you, Gilda. Okay. Um, he pulls Anything. out a, he pulls out a piece of parchment um, and uh, takes a, a quill from his ink pot and begins to write you a, uh, a, a doctor's note of sorts um, <laughs> to get out of class. Um, and he signs his name at the bottom and then hands it to you. Here you go. This uh, should clear up everything with your professors if they ask. Okay. And he looks down, read, glances through, reads it really quickly, and then shoves it in his pocket. Thank you. Chin up, young Gilder. We'll get you through this. Don't you worry. Okay. I I just wish I knew what was going on, but I suppose uh. maybe... I'll be doing my research into this. You can, you can believe me on that. And if I if I discover anything, I will call you back to you, to my office. Okay. And then he like slyly begins walking out of the office. Um, as you as you reach the door, he goes. Ah, w one more thing, Gilder. Yes. And he actually he stands up from his um, his desk and begins to walk down his little steps um, to the main floor of his office and says, y you see all these books here? Any nods? Well, these books were left here by the, well, one of the founders of the school. Um, this used to be his office, um, Nedrian Nil. Are you familiar with the name? I think his picture is in the lobby. Yes, if I remember. Yes, his uh, his his painting is in the great hall. Um, these are his personal collection of books, and well, Nedrian Nil, quite a long time ago, granted, but he he dedicated his life to exploring every single section of hidden magic and ancient magic. Um, he, he explored far and wide and did hours and hours of research into absolutely anything he could find. And this collection right here is quite a bit of his notes. Now, I'm going to be searching through these books, um, as the last time I read them was, well, well over a hundred years by now, but... I imagine the process might go a little faster if I had some assistance. So he walks over to the bookshelf and um, he pulls a couple books from the shelf and says, if you would be so inclined, maybe s since you would be the best to know about your own little predicament, if you uh, take a look through some of these books and see if anything sort of strikes a similarity to your own condition. And as um, Charlemagne is, like, getting the books from the bookshelf, Gilly's yes. thinking, God damn it, I hate reading. What is go What is this? It's like more homework on top of homework. Ugh. <laughs> um, he pulls uh, 
a couple of books from the uh, pile and kind of motions you to come over towards him. And he, he like walks slowly, slinking his feet. Um, he says, now, there's uh, quite a few books in this personal library, but um, we all have to start somewhere. So uh, I suppose we'll just start on this section of the shelf and just work our way all the way across. And, um, well, I suppose we'll start here. Uh, he hands you just the first book on the top left of the shelf. Um, and now I have a couple books prepared, but I think it'd be more fun to have you roll to see what it is. So, um, why don't you give me a D6 roll? I know. Mandatory extra credit. I rolled a two. Okay. Um, so this one is a, a rather small, um, thin leather bound notebook. Um, with a, sh a piece of twine uh, tied around it, sealing it shut. And um, as you're handing the the what appears to be the smallest book of the bunch, Gilly like looks excited, like yes, it's not too much. Um, Charlemagne takes the rest of the stack that he's holding and begins to uh, walk back <laughs> towards his desk. And I guess Gilly, like, um, takes the leather-bound notebook and then starts to walk out of the office. He just waves to Charlemagne. Take care, young Gilder. You too. And he leaves the office. Okay. Um, so you weren't in there for a ton of time, but, um... By the time you uh, leave, it's around lunchtime, we'll say, so you can head back towards the Great Hall if you wish. I think he probably, instead of going to class, like, hid in the library for, like, the last the 30 minutes. The yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then um, headed to the, the lobby area. Mostly because he didn't want to go to the class. He heard that it was boring from other people. Um, okay, so you arrive in the Great Hall and you see um, your group of friends uh, just starting to leave uh, across the entire Great Hall. <laughs> and he uh, waves Croak down. <laughs> hey, hey! Croak will uh, salute Gilly on his approach. Greetings, Gilly. Gilly. You missed class today. Gilly does the same, mimics the same um, salute. Yeah, I know, I know. I um, I had some stuff I had to do. Am I still a chicken? Mm, yes. Hey, Gilly, <laughs> got some fresh chicken. We're going to go cook it. <gasps> really? Oh, yeah. Who's going to make it? Uh, we're going to go get Esta, and we're going to go teach her how to cook. <gasps> That's exciting. Or can we have a pet chicken? Hmm. No, I think we should cook this one. We Why don't we just on chase beach, it though. around? We gotta go meet some people on the beach. Okay. Maybe we'll cook it for dinner? Yeah. That sounds good. Mmm, chicken. Right? It'll be fresh. I know. Is Kenrod still on Yo? The chicken's still on Yo? I, I'm pecking at some bread on the table. You're in a courtyard. <laughs> no, You're just pecking fine. at the I'm stone pecking, ground. I'm, I'm pecking at some seeds I found on the ground. <laughs> Guys, I heard chickens eat rocks. Should we, like, feed it some rocks? Oh, yeah. Gilly, like, nods at Killian. That's probably a good thing. Crook nods. I'll try anything once. Do turtles eat rocks? Mm, no. 
<laughs> Are you sure? I'm gonna look it up now. This this turtle doesn't. You'll eat strange slime, but not rocks. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're just a little chewy. I don't know. They're supposed to help you digest food better. Like you eat they the do. rocks and it mashes yeah. up the food in your stomach. Yeah, it says that they eat rocks or pebbles, but they don't need to in um, captivity. I guess you always oh, captive. Actual turtles. Yeah. Um, okay, so heading to the beach then, yeah? Mm hmm. Right. Chaotic, stupid. <laughs> um, so, as we head to the beach, um, you see uh, two figures out in front of you. Hang on, let me get rid of Kenwin. Um, who are standing, facing away from you, out towards the water. Um, who you recognize from the library you've seen before. Um, and then far beyond you, you see um, the silhouette of a giant head. A head? Mm-hmm. Um, you can't quite tell what it is, but it maybe looks like a giant rock in the middle of the water. Hey, yo, you should touch that. Okay. Um, uh, actually, hang on. As you walk by him, um, the... Uh, the uh, Arakoka gentleman um, turns around to see you guys walk by him, and he says, um, "Oh, he hello! Uh, hang on, hang on now. Um, Shalavander is just coming into dock, so just h hold on for a little bit and give him some space." Mm. Okay. Purple dog. I'll, I'll take your word for it. So as you as you sit there and wait. Um, the, the rock begins to move. Um, it begins to kind of pull itself up from the water. Um, and it reveals that there is uh, another, what looks to be another giant rock behind it, um, which has, uh, well, it has several small, uh, what appear to be cottages on its back. Um, as it kind of pulls itself out of the water, water just streams off of it. Um, and it begins to kind of step its way up onto shore. <gasps> what? <gasps> Mama. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. oh my God, I got squished. Oh my God, we're getting crushed. There we I go. love you too, Mom. He snaps. He snaps to grid just like everybody else. Um, is, is my AC high enough to uh, deflect the turtle landing on me? No, you die. <laughs> That's my toilet. Um, right, guys, way to go. I'm gonna head back to the office for a bit. I'll try and jump back in in maybe like 45 minutes or so. Okay, take care. Um, so the the massive turtle kind of hauls itself half up onto the shore, um, and just slowly kind of moves its head around, looking at the rest of the class. Yo, is so happy. Uh -huh. Um, yo, the, do you know anything about this? Uh, do I? <laughs> um, you might have heard kind of tales about them as you uh, traveled in the oceans, but you might not have actually seen one. Yeah. Um, but you would have heard tales about massive turtles um, that kind of are the size of islands uh, when they fully mature. Oh, and um, the group. Uh, they the call group. they called them dragon turtles. Oh, a dragon turtle croak. Bet you didn't know that. I certainly did mm -hmm. not. Very interesting. Uh, so the, the Air Kokra uh, man will say, Ah, I suppose you first years haven't met Shalavander yet, then. I haven't had the pleasure, no. Croak will shake his head no. Well, Shalavander sort of acts as transportation for the college and well me and meridia here are heading off to our our placement for our second year and uh well shalavander is the way that we're going to get there i hope i get this big one day uh he looks at you and says uh i'm i'm sure you will if you uh drink your milk mm -hmm. big glass tonight Crook will pat you on the back and say, 
I believe you can do it, yo. I have faith in you. <laughs> yo smiles broadly. Um, and then from behind you, um, you hear kind of like a very, very loud, uh, almost like a a groan or a roar as the turtle starts to move its head. Um, and everybody else, you hear a very, very loud, uh, kind of like a big moaning or a, a, almost like a yawn sound. Um, but yo, you do not hear that yawn. Uh, specifically, you speak Aquin, so you hear the turtle say, All aboard, young little ones. I'm ready oh, to man. depart. And then he lowers his, he lowers his head down to the sand. Um, and then uh, Meridia and the Aracocra uh, take a step up onto his nose. And um, they then begin to walk up uh, the, the, the sort of bridge that's built on his back towards the little cottages. And then they, they let themselves inside the cottage and disappear from your sight. And the big turtle sort of uh, lets out another very loud <laughs> and, begins, and begins to um, work his way off the, uh, the shore back into the sea. Oh, would you like a fresh tur uh, chicken? I hold Ken Road up. Uh, the, the turtle, the, the massive turtle, Shallowvander, looks uh, towards you very slowly. He moves his head and looks towards you and says, No thanks, little one. I already ate today. So amazing. Okay. And then he, uh, he continues his way back out into the, uh, the sea. One day, day yeah. I want to grow up to be just like him. Especially the voice. Holy crap. One day, yo. <laughs> I didn't know you guys could get that big. It's rare. How old was that turtle? Who are you asking? <laughs> yo. I gotta ask you, so. Um, you're not really sure, but from what you understand, dragon turtles live for hundreds of years. I relay that. A few hundred years, maybe? I don't know. Alright, so we just, you just gotta keep yourself alive for a few hundred years. Mm, might be hard, judging by the first 15 or so, but I'll try. Don't worry, yo. You have allies now to protect you. Aww. Our goal in life is to get you to be that turtle. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll carry you guys everywhere. Uh, the entire campaign takes a, an immediate right turn towards just finding out how to brew a <laughs> growing potion. <laughs> yeah, make it giant. So we'll drop out of co Oh, I guess. We, we do know that girl in the college. basement that can make us potion. Oh, yeah. Um, so after a while, the um, the uh, sort of cottages that are basically after Shalavender kind of works his way back into the water, you start to just see his shell in the water. So it looks like sort of a moving island, um, and the the moving island kind of works its way back out into the ocean, and soon it's just a little speck on the horizon as you watch it kind of disappear from sight. I wave. <laughs> Is it Shellavander? Uh, I will type it for you guys. Okay. Ah, okay. We're just going to end up calling him Shellavander anyway. Okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> Goodbye, Shellavander. Uh, so the rest of the lunch is free for you guys to do what you see fit. Uh, it's maybe been... Yo, come back. Don't go into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following. Don't go out there. <laughs> wait up. Wait for me. Teach me your ways. 
Hmm. I want to find a fish for lunch. I'll be content. Okay. Uh, Kirk just kind of takes a few tepid steps into the sand and then uh, removes his cloak and lays it down. It's kind of a blanket to sit on. Killian finds some tiny rocks and just kind of starts placing them in front of Kenro, seeing if he'll eat them. Oh yeah, hang on, let me get Kenro. Yo, would you mind catching me a fish? Sure, no problem. Thanks, pal. Uh, Kenro kind of pecks at them, but doesn't eat them. Mm. Damn bird. I so, I'm gonna catch some. <laughs> you guys, you guys can bring food from the dormitory. You don't have to uh, eat raw fish fresh, every every lunch. Fresh is so much better. Though. <laughs> Wait, who says that's for you raw? I mean, you unless you guys are, eat it raw. are you are you building a fire? Let's start a fire, guys. Gilly's got fireball. Oh, yeah. We got this blanket oh, yeah. right here. We could light it on fire. <laughs> Uh, put the pile of the fish in a pile and then set the chicken on top and tell Gilly to cast fireball on that. <laughs> Just don't miss. And cast it. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, then I, I won't make you make an attack or anything. Um, what are you lighting on fire exactly? Pile of fish and ten ropes. Just, just the fish on the sa on the sand, though. Uh huh. Okay. Um. <laughs> Wait a minute, there, Gilly. Croak <laughs> uh, will remove his shield and place it up under the fish as kind of a platter. <laughs> okay. Smart. Um. So you you uh, you cast firebolt and um, ignite the fish. Um, so they're in the middle of a, a flame, sitting on uh, Croak's shield as a platter. Um, and after only a few seconds, they're starting to get a little blackened. Oh, man. How do we stop the fire? I don't know. Um, get that bucket and fill it with water. <laughs> throw it on the fish. <laughs> Pretty bad. I got high survival, and I'm doing this, but it's fun. Killian's gonna take this bucket, get some water, and <laughs> sprinkle the water on the fish to put out the fire. Um, the the DM loudly coughs that Killian knows Druidcraft, which allows her to mm -hmm. snuff out a uh, instantly a small campfire. <clears throat> oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but All if you right. want to use the bucket, that's fine too. Go ahead. A small voice inside Killian's head. <laughs> nah, Kelly will use Druidcraft. I just wanted to remind you, because Druidcraft is one of those spells that has, like, a bunch of different effects, and people tend to forget <laughs> that one. Um, even though it's, like, incredibly useful, because you can just instantly light campfires and snuff them out. <laughs> Kelly will snuff out the fire. Okay. Does this use a spell slot? No, that's a oh, cantrip. That oh, that's sweet. a cantrip. All right. Uh, Kirk would have suggested that Killian light the fire, but he didn't know about Druidcraft, but he has <laughs> seen Gilly use Firebolt in combat. So. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Gilly's used a spell slot now, but unless you go getting in any fights, you should be okay. Alright, so is the fire still going? Oh, actually, that? never mind. Firebolt's a cantrip, so you didn't. Um, uh, yeah, so the fire goes out. Um, and the fish are a little blackened around the edges, but they're at least a little more cooked than raw. All right, let's break this fish up. Dig in, everyone. <laughs> Croak will grab one of the uh, blackened fish and start eating. Killian's going to sit stuff down it through his helmet. Guys, I really appreciate our lunches together. They're very nice. Yeah. Uh, thanks for catching the fish, yo. Thanks for cooking, Gilly. And thanks for putting out the fire, Gillian. 
It was a group effort. Yep. There's an ancient saying. Teamwork team makes work. everything work. Hmm. I haven't heard that around my parts. That's a great saying, Gilly. <laughs> I'll have to remember that. <laughs> you should write that down. It's a true yeah. motto to live by. Guys, you should put out on shirts and sell them around school. We can make some money. Ooh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Croak actually takes a notepad out of his armor and writes the phrase down. <laughs> Um, so you, you spend the rest of the lunch break uh, chomping down on your a little bit crunchy blackened fish. But um, sometime throughout the uh, your little lunch break, um, there's another small puff of smoke and um, the chicken turns back into Kenra. God damn it. Oh, man. Oh, I thought we were going to eat him. Whoa, hi, Kenro! I mean, we still, still technically could. Mm, I don't want to eat a dwarf. I hear dwarves are fatty. Yeah, he's probably very tough. For the love of Morningstar, let's not eat a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. Right, you're right, right. There are better races that are probably tasty. Yeah. Uh, so you you're finish. Right. I eat Kelly before I eat Kenro. Mm -hmm. Yo, have you? Eaten other races? No, it's just something you hear on the high seas, you know. Uh, I'd like to roll insight on that. <laughs> um, I've never eaten a human. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Yo rolled deception and um, oh <laughs> Croak, I rolled an eighteen. Croak rolled. Oh God. Okay, yeah. Let's see if you can beat your eighteen. I got an eight. Okay. Uh, Croak, you are <laughs> well aware that um, he's not exactly <laughs> being the most upfront with you. Wait, so he has? Hmm? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, you say he's not being upfront. So, but... Yo, have you actually eaten other races? No. You're crazy, man. It's disgusting. Sorry, no, I meant the inverse of that, but um, yeah, okay. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> I was a little worried about my <laughs> buddy over here. Yeah, no. Um, okay, so as as you finish off you your lunch. Secrets. Well, the fish could be his friend, therefore he is killing, you know. It's true, I can talk to them. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, do we need to clarify exactly how Yo is catching these fish? Because... Um, I've been letting him do it very easily for a specific reason, and it is that because he can basically give them simple commands. <laughs> he can give them simple commands. Uh, Croak is just going to take his shield and just kind of equip it and just sit with it in front of him. <laughs> yeah, yo, we're friends, right? Good buddies. Traveled together, took the portal, students together. Yeah. Right? Oh, of course. Of course. Good to know. I would never simply command you to be eaten by me. I should hope not. Because you wouldn't fall for it. <clears throat> so as yeah, you, you're way too smart for that, Crow. As you polish off the rest of your meal, um, the clock begins to roll around to your next class time. Where are we headed to, guys? Where are we headed to, Croak? Uh, Croak will take out his schedule and see that we are headed to evocation class. Which is uh, just down the hall from your last class. Roger that. Uh, it looks like we have to go to evocation class next. Follow the schedule master. Uh, Croak will take his cloak blanket up and uh, attach it oh, to his back. And Gilly yeah. goes, oh, that's a good nickname. Schedule master. Please don't call me that. Our schedules. Uh, hi, Croaky. Yeah, don't call me that either. <laughs> Croaky Gildor. Schedule master. Yeah, Sir Croak, Sir Crokius, the schedule master. Uh, so you head back towards the school um, through 
um, Sundial Square. I missed the chicken. Same. Now we just got this dwarf. <laughs> we should we should have cut off his beard, but we could. <laughs> no. Um. Should get him like some drawstrings for his hood too, so he doesn't have to constantly keep hold of it. Yeah! <laughs> Yo, that'd be a great Christmas present for him. I'll work on it. Whoever gets him for Secret <laughs> Santa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so you head back towards the um, engine saw. Um, so and... then just please look on his face as from having to hold the hood. Yeah. Sorry, Gosh. sorry, Jay. Try getting purple tunnel. And back towards your class. So, um, we got Kenra and we got oh, he's big and angry now. Oh, I thought they all left. What do you mean? Uh, uh, Meridia. And yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of there. The duplicates. Are they all second years? Uh, yeah, they were all second years. Oh, okay. That critical salute now again on his way in. That dude definitely didn't lie. We got to see something cool. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. It's super is. Not what I was expecting. Now I have something to live for. <laughs> yes, you do, buddy. <laughs> That's a little dark. <laughs> not, not that I didn't before, but... <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay, yo. Uh, so Maha is looking down at uh, her her desk and just writing something on a page as as you begin to file into class. Actually, let's get rid of somebody. <laughs> there we go. Wendy, no. <laughs> um. So as you kind of begin to file into class, she she allows you all to. Make your way in and take your seats. And then um, she, once she's satisfied that you're all inside, she uh, looks up and begins to address the class. Uh, well, welcome first years to, uh, well, your first evocations class. Um, some of you may have more experience with evocations than others, but... Um, well, by the end of it, we'll make sure that you're all pros, right? Now, yeah. there are, uh, I guess, one familiar face here, but I don't know the rest of you, so uh, feel free to introduce yourselves. I'm Gilly. That's Gilly. That is Gilly. Indeed, it is Gildor. <laughs> uh, and the rest of you? Uh, Kirkle salute. I'm Croak. He's Hi, the Crokest. <laughs> Crokey the schedule master. Yeah. Uh, just Croak will be fine. No, it won't. Well, it's nice to meet I'm you. I'm Killian. Uh, and, and you too, Killian. And I'm Ken Roke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was here for a second. Um, and I'm yo, and you saved my life. And thanks again. Uh, uh, d d don't worry about it, my friend. Uh, I was just passing by. Um, and um, Amelia will finish her introduction as well. Um, and say, uh, my name is Amelia. Um, so after you all make your introductions. Uh, she stands up from in front of her desk um, and she grabs a piece of chalk from the board and uh, she uses it to draw a rather large circle across the entire chalkboard. Um, and she says, well, I know that uh, you've probably just come right from Theophilius's class, yes? Well, before our lunch break. Yeah, we saw a giant turtle, but I mean, yeah. Ah, you must mean Shalavander. 
Yes, the great and wise and almighty Shalavander. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that's a bit odd. But um, mm-hmm. if you've just come from, uh, from uh, Sh- Professor Nightingale's class in the morning, well, to be honest, I had him too when I used to go here. And uh, I know he's a bit dry, so I thought I would give you guys a bit of a break by starting our class with a demonstration. And uh, for that, I'm going to need a volunteer. Who would like to? Uh, who would like to participate? Kayleen will raise her hand. Uh, anybody else raising their hand? I will. Um, yo, you put that hand down. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you say it, but I knew you were going to. So, um, you guys can contest it if you want. I'll let her have it. All right. Um, so, Kayleen, very violent. Yo down. Yeah, I do not want to <laughs> mess with her. Uh, Killian, you put your hand up, and uh, she says, "Oh, very good. Uh, come to the class. So come to the front of the class, then, young Killian." Hello. I can't turn around. <laughs> I will turn you around. Um, very well. Now, I thought I would display sort of the use of evocation magic so to cast this spell in particular you need well a couple different components you need uh, she begins to gather them from her desk as she lists them um, she pulls out a small piece of what looks to be kind of a crystal um, she says you need some some clear crystal it can't be cloudy it can't be um, can't have anything uh, trapped inside it it must be uh, a clear crystal and then a, a matching piece of uh, gum Arabic. So to cast the spell, you need both of those components. And then uh, she raises her hand and just uh, kind of places it on your head, Killian. Oh. And, and then um, the rest of you see a large bubble begin to form around Killian. Mm. Now, the spell that I have just cast is called, um, well, it's called Resilient Sphere. And I suppose you can gather the purpose of it from the title. Uh, It was designed as, well, temporary invincibility, rather, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So why don't we demonstrate that? Um, she snaps her fingers, and the floor beneath you bursts into flames. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't even feel the heat. Okay, good. Good. Um, I want to shout out, like, that fish we had for lunch. And then she uh, she waves her hands again, and then a small little splash of water will put out the fire. Now, would anyone else like a turn? Me, 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 me. Come up, yeah, 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 yeah. come up to the come up to the front of the class then. Now I want you to put absolutely everything you have into this hit. Don't worry, she won't be harmed. Yo, Say punch no me. I punch as hard as I physically can. <laughs> All right. Um, so you punched the uh, the large dome that is surrounding, or the bubble that is surrounding uh, Killian. Um. And it wobbles, but um, there's no impact to Killian at all. Um, and uh, Yo, you just feel like you punched basically nothing. Um, it's just sort of like a hard surface. It's so cool. I'd do it a couple more times just for fun. Anybody else want to go? You can do it at the same time as Yo here. Oh. Croak, you got to try this, man. Hmm. All right. Uh, Croak will draw his long sword and uh, mm-hmm. go for a slash on the bubble. All right, your uh, your long sword clangs off of it, um, and just sort of glances off the the, the sphere, uh, and Killian is unharmed. Gilly, mm-hmm. would you Gilly, would you like to participate as well? Yeah, he um, throws a a gust of wind to see if it does anything. He's gonna use gust. 
Um, so Killian, the gust of wind actually kind of it it rolls you around a little bit in the bubble, um, kind of like a hamster ball, um, but you are in, in, entirely unharmed. Ooh, How would you that have again? <laughs> again, again, again. Does it again? Killian's having the time of her life right now in this bubble. <laughs> Now, I imagine all of you can see, well, the practical purposes of temporary invincibility, yes? How long does it last? Well, uh, let me double check. So if you want to see. Uh, Croak will sheath his longsword and attempt to grab the bubble. Like you can, grapple, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so you can't really like reach your entire arms around it because um, it is quite wide. But uh, you can definitely, like, touch it. It is, like, tangible. So you're just, like, mm -hmm. hugging it? Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, but Maha says, well, it lasts for as, as long as you can concentrate on keeping the spell in place. And that is, the duration of the actual sphere itself is around a minute. So, like I said, it is temporary invincibility. But quite handy if you know how to use it well. So the parts that you used with the clear crystal and like the, what was the other, the gum arabic? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what if what if I ate them? Like, could I just like cast this whenever? That would not work. You see, the 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 concept of the two, of the two components is that each of them form half of the sphere. It's a hemispherical Whoa. piece of crystal, and a hemispherical piece of gum arabic that then form a full sphere so eating them would have no effect at all though mm -hmm. uh, i imagine very unpleasant okay i won't try it then probably for the best Killian, haven't you learned your lesson about eating strange things uh, uh, no let her live her life croak <laughs> okay <laughs> Eating strange things is one of the best parts. Now, I do want to stress with you that, like most spells, utility and, and practicality are one thing, but you must keep in mind that you have to use them wisely. Now, Killian, how confident do you feel in a fight right now? I'll take Kenro. <laughs> okay, then try to strike Kenro. I... Physically or like... However you wish. Not. However you wish. Uh. Uh. Hold on. I'm gonna back up for this one. <laughs> Can I use Druid Craft to like... No. Trim his beard. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, Killian will just like... Roll over to Kenro in his seat. I can't take the ball with me. I got it. And move, move where you want and I'll move the ball on top of you. She's going to stand right next to Kenro, take uh, so, off her bagpipe, and go for a slash. Uh, so everybody else, the, the ball rolls like a hamster ball, um, kind of bumping up against the desk. <laughs> um, uh, you have to kind of push against the edge as you walk to be able to move it. Um, but as you slash, your uh, little bagpipe knife that you've developed uh, hits the edge of the sphere um, and stops, and Kenro is unharmed. <coughs> now you understand why, although useful, it is not an instant win condition for your battle. You see... Can I, like, get to roll people over? Well, I imagine most people would stop you, and, well, mm -hmm. to be honest, looking at you, you don't exactly weigh a lot. <laughs> But, so um, if I put, like, Yo in here, and then, like, Gilly cast Gust, and we rolled over Kenro. Mm -hmm. Is that effective? Uh, it seems rather complicated when many other... Oh. Hang on, we're getting some... Carolyn. Sounds like wind. Oh. Just want to get that solved. It's, it's pretty loud. Oh, I was saying, let's try it. With the um, putting Yo in there and then trying to roll over Kinrock. You can do it in the hallway. 
Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Y'all should all line up and I'll bowl, bowl into you. Really? Now, now I don't, I don't think that's such a good idea. Party. You'll, be, you'll be fine. It's a hamster wheel. Or do we know what hamsters are? Um, I mean, possibly hamsters exist, but hamster wheels maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we won't do it right now. Uh, but we'll do it soon. Well, then, I suppose if you want to try that, then you'd better pay attention in my class and, uh, I guess, learn this spell for yourself, huh? Can we make sure to pay attention all class? <laughs> um, Maha will kind of walk over to the ball and say, Now, Killian, you, you understand now that while others can't harm you, you also can't harm them. So if your enemies, if you are alone and your enemies simply decide to wait the spell out, then you are in trouble. I mean, I got these bagpipes. I can fight back. And now tell me, suppose you're in a dungeon and you're... Your enemy decides to simply roll you into a pit of spikes. Mm -hmm. That seems very unpleasant. The they wouldn't harm you for the time being, but once the spell dissolves, then what would you do? Uh, can I make the bubble fly at all? Like if I were to like. Only if I don't you had know. a different. Only if you had a different spell. Uh. I, I'm probably gonna die to the spikes. Mm hmm. Whoa, what did I walk in on? <laughs> um, there's, class. there's a little bit of like loud hum in the background right now. Sorry, I, I, it was switching over to Bluetooth. Got it, it's that's, that's, that's better. Um, uh, what, what, what did I walk in? I just heard Killian said I'm about to die. Uh, don't worry about it. She's not actually dying, she was discussing a hypothetical. Um, oh, gotcha. Maha says, and let's say you were doing some adventuring in a volcano and your foes decided to roll you right down the hill into a uh, a pit of lava and the spell then disappeared. How would you fare? I think I'd burn to death. I think so too. Now, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that while powerful, spells must be used properly, otherwise... You can, uh, you can seal your own fate, to put it lightly. So, as long as you, you think about how you're using the spells and apply them in the appropriate situation, then you should, you should be able to master evocation. Um, then she's going to place her hand on the, um, the, the sphere and whisper something under her breath, and then it is going to shatter like glass. Hello. You should also watch out for those who know the disintegrate spell, uh, because they will end this very quickly. Can, can you reflect a disintegrate spell? What do you mean, reflect? Uh... Uh, to keep, keep it from hurting the bubble. You could try. But just, just keep in mind that disintegrate and this spell, well, they don't, they don't exactly go hand in hand. So, while powerful, spells need to be fully understood to put them to their best use. That's what I'm trying to impart on you. Oh, I'll put it to the best use. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she spends the rest of the class. Um, she has taken up a bit of time with her little demonstration and explanation. But um, with the uh, rest of the class, she spends it kind of explaining the details of that spell. 
um, and um, describing to you sort of how the process of how she um, how she found the ingredients for it, um, which she she travels quite a bit. She explains, um, and that she found she gathers her ingredients as she travels. Um, she found this particular piece of crystal uh, somewhere in Zulkaran, uh, in the desert. And she, she, she spends the rest of the class kind of basically explaining how resilient sphere works, um, as well as uh, Otaluk, the uh, wizard who originally uh, composed the spell. She gives you a bit of his background as well. And then as the class uh, begins to end, uh, she... Oh, oh heavens, I got quite carried away. Um, I, I suppose that's all for now. And, uh, well, I'll see you all next week and we'll continue discussing other spells. Quick little nod and salute. Um, can you spell O to Luke? Uh, O-T-I Luke. Gotcha. All right. Uh, she begins to kind of gather stuff from her desk. Your bows deeply. <laughs> she doesn't notice she's gathering things from her <laughs> desk. Don't worry. Uh, many people don't notice my salutes either. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Indeed. Gilly just like walks. Or actually, Gilly talks to Killian and he's like, You did great. Next time we should play some um, people fall over. Ding. I don't. I don't think bowling exists. Uh... No, it wouldn't. Oh, Guys, you should play that bowling. game with that. <laughs> it would be great. What if we got extra credit for doing it? Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Wouldn't it? Maybe mm. we can. Gotta learn, gotta learn how to cast a spell first. And then we can have um, Kenro be the the Sorry. star pin. Yeah. Yo, guys, we're really coming up with something here. <laughs> First t-shirts and now this. We're on a roll. Kenro shakes his head. So about what time is it right now? Uh, it's at the end of your class, so maybe four-ish. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you have, you have the rest of the day before dinner and then curfew. So you can do whatever you wish. What no, the uh, Great Hall. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose that we have some free time between now and dinner. Um, Is I'd there like to... a part of the beach that we didn't explore? Just loops her like back down uh, to up or down to different parts of the island, right? It's basically just a big long beach that surrounds the island. Um, some parts yeah. kind of it kind of stops at a certain point and turns into cliff. Mm -hmm. uh, Crook's gonna turn the doorknob to the moon. Okay. And enter. Has it been a one in-game day since we went in these rooms the first time? Yes. Okay. So she's not here. Uh, while you're doing this, I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick. So I'll okay. Check. Do your thing. Um. Yeah. So you you turn the doorknob to the moon symbol, uh, the top doorknob to the moon symbol, and then the other one. Um, turn the open the other one to pull the door open, and uh, you're back in this dark room. Um, with the uh, the statue of the the silver statue of the woman in the distance, Kirk will approach and place one gold coin in the uh, offer tray, and then he will kneel. Uh, Blessed Hana, I am learning much at this magic academy. I hope that you continue to bless me. With your, with your graciousness, so that I may study here and 
learn more about these magical powers. I know that I am a fighter, and I know not much of magic, but I hope that you will allow me to gain knowledge and further my strength. You feel calm like you like you do when you walk through the forest by yourself but we'll just uh, kneel there for a moment and just kind of let that calm wash over him okay is anybody else doing anything <laughs> no Killian will give it a try uh, give what a try uh, the nature room up top right. All right. Um, so you twist the uh, the top knob to um, the symbol of a leaf, and then pull open the bottom doorknob to reveal the the small garden room. Sorry, I don't know why that started there. Um, and you're back in the garden. Uh. Um, there's a new little sprout that's been planted, uh, since you were last in here. Oh. Uh. Can Druid Craft, like, make water? Uh, so, Druid Craft, um, can, it can affect plants, um, but you can basically, it can't really create that particularly. Did, did um, change, oh, sorry. It, um, yeah. no, it can't create water, but um, you can affect plants. You can make um, flowers blossom and seed pods open um, or leaf buds kind of bloom. Hmm. Killing, did you change your divine class from when I thought you were like the grave domain? She changed the nature domain. Yeah. Okay, has this been this way since the beginning of the game? Have I been just completely picturing your character wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's been like that since like last time, I guess. Uh, I allowed her to shift because she hadn't really dedicated too much to it yet, and she felt that this oh, fit. Gotcha. Okay, she felt so this fit her character like, better. Like, Right, right, no, no, I was just confused because, like, she cast uh, Animal Friendship earlier, and now she's doing Druidcraft, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, l I, let her, I let her make a quick shift near the beginning because she no, felt no, it No, no, all fit. good, I was just confused. I was just confused. No worries, no worries. I think you probably missed the one where, we sh where she shifted. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so uh, what are you doing with Druidcraft, then? Uh, she was going to water the plant, but if she can't really do that, I don't know. Uh... You know, she's just gonna like lean down over the new sprout, give like the leaf a little tap, and kind of like pet it, like, and just whisper to yourself, "I have no idea what I'm doing," and walk out. Um, as you kind of tap it, um, you see sort of like a little bud kind of start to open slightly. Oh, uh, she taps it again, kind of like rapidly tapping it to see if anything. <laughs> Um, nothing more than that happens, but a small little bud grows on the, the one little sprout. She clenches her fist and goes, yes. <laughs> uh, hi, well, what's this god's name again? Goddess? Athar. Athar, have a nice day. Thanks, man. It walks out. Kalian's not the most religious person. <laughs> has no idea what she's doing at all. She's a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, fi she'll find religion. She'll, fi she'll find religion later. Yeah, this is a religious awakening happening here. Um, <laughs> so, does anybody else want to do anything? Or are we moving on? Um, you don't need to roleplay or anything, but I'll do... A little prayer in my in the water area to send a shawl. Okay. I am not praying today. Gotcha. Uh, feeling at peace, uh, Croak will rise and leave the room. 
Um, I believe Kenro pokes his head around the Eustacea one today. Wait, what did Kenro do? Wait, I'm here. Oh, okay, you're here. Uh, well, you're the bard. Yeah. You're you're the the one domain, right? So you're poke your head around here. Uh, yep. Oh, sorry, I don't have all twenty up. Yeah, it just it makes sense for you. Um, each of the rooms is dedicated to, to a different god. Well, as everyone knows, um, Kenro worships the, the goddess of knowledge, or god of knowledge. Yeah, so there's a room for Eustacea. It has a symbol of a small book um, on the top of the doorknob. Can I, uh, can I make a knowledge check? Uh, yeah, what are you looking for, though? Uh, I want, to uh, ins I just want, I just want some new, new inspiration on, like, some new knowledge, you know, kind of thing, like, just some. Just on, oh, on anything, about, or, about, uh... <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'm just looking to learn. <laughs> uh, about uh, some sort of topic or anything, you can just... The most vague thing ever. Or? I am yeah, the most. I'm being vague on purpose, very, very much. So. <laughs> okay, make your knowledge check then. Um, I, I can't roll it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Um, like history or like what are we trying to do? There's no real knowledge. Yeah, we'll do history. Yeah, we'll do history. Sure. Um. Okay, that was a three. <laughs> Hell yeah! And the I DM breathes added. a sigh of relief. Kendra learns what he ate for breakfast this morning. <laughs> and learns what it feels like to be a chicken. <laughs> I, I mean, now understand the history of Grand Lorien. Kendra learns the deep lore. Uh, so, as the rest of you finish your prayers, um, you kind of reconvene, I suppose, back in the entrance hall. All right, Schedule Master, what now? Hmm, well, there isn't anything scheduled, so I believe that we can wander now if we would like, or if anyone has any particular place they would like to visit. Um, so this is free time if you guys wanted to do anything, but I will also allow you to say uh, we spend the rest of the day talking and we can skip. I just wanted to allow you to basically fast track if you wanted to. Do uh, any of y'all know where uh, a dwarf like myself could uh, gather myself uh, an instrument? I am such a peak performer when it comes to the art. <laughs> actually, actually Ken it wrote... It's a shame that I cannot share it with the world. Ken wrote, there's a piano in the uh, Eustacea altar. I would like... All right, we'll make a performance check for you then. Oof. Um, that was a one. Not a nat one, but a one. Um, so Hell yeah! <laughs> Ken wrote bangs on the piano keys. <laughs> um, I am... A voice of a generation. I am a genius. As the rest of you are finishing up your prayers, you just hear an unholy din coming from one of the rooms. <laughs> can, can Kelly and join in? <laughs> I suppose so, yes. Oh, God. Um, 19. <laughs> okay. Um. So on one end of the piano is just... He's on, like, the low notes, and he's just hammering his fist into it. And on the right, you're playing just a beautiful melody. I'm really trying to keep pace with what he's doing with his, like, fist banging. Like, you know? <laughs> that Ken Rogue plays like he's still in chicken form. <laughs> hmm. He was, like, bobbing his head, but really confusedly. He both loves it and hates it. He, he doesn't understand what's going <laughs> on. The, uh, what's the name of the uh, god, god of knowledge again? The goddess? Eustacea. 
Yeah, yeah, just with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the knowledge of the music. <laughs> um, so after you guys, I suppose, finish up playing, um, is there anything you'd like to do? Uh, is there a the part fight. of the area we haven't looked in yet? Mm, I think you've explored most of the school grounds. Maybe. Oh, yeah. you know what I want to do? I want to go to the different floors of the dorms. We haven't done that yet. We did. Yeah, we did. You did do that. Oh, we did. Yep. Yeah. yeah we know all the. Uh, Killian talked. Killian talked to everybody. <laughs> Knocked on every <laughs> door. No, I mean like going to the fourth room, fourth year. Or we did, we did that. Oh, like to the other years. Can we oh, yeah. <laughs> you uh, you did that on the first day, and they laughed you out of it. Yeah, I'm first too embarrassed to go back. There's no second years. We could just like go rummage to their rooms. Uh, there are still yeah. second years <laughs> to be oh. to be just clear. Two of them, right? two oh. of them left. Oh. oh, only two. Yes. We should invite them to dinner. The whole all of the second years. Yeah, why not? Years left. Um, yeah. No, only only two left, like on the turtle. There's a lot left at school. Oh, but... I thought you meant there was only two left. <laughs> Our table's quite small, Killian. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're all gonna fit around it. <laughs> yeah, like like Shalavander is is one turtle, so he if he, if they're going to different locations, then they have to wait their turn, basically. So we won't invite them to dinner. But what, what if we want to just see how ni much nicer their dorms are? I mean, y'all can't. Yo is way too embarrassed after the last time. 